This is over in central Florida right now, where you're looking at some of the footage provided by our Fox 13 Tampa team. This is a beached whale, a sperm whale, that uh, we did bring you that aerial footage of just yesterday as crews out there were working to free the whale that appeared to be stuck on a sandbar of some type. Fox 13 Tampa's Kelly Cowan has been out over in Venice Beach there, that's in Florida, to provide the latest details. She's gathering those after speaking with folks on the scene. And Kelly joining us now live. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. What is the latest? Latest. Well, the latest is that the whale did die overnight, so we understand that this is now a complete recovery effort, and um, marine scientists have been arriving since daylight to get ready for what they're planning to do here, which is a necropsy, and they're hoping to determine exactly uh, what happened with this animal, why it ended up stranding itself. I'm actually joined by one of NOAA's uh, marine scientists who's uh, arrived this morning, and just give us the latest. What is the next, uh, what are the next steps? Right, so the next steps are we're going <clears> to <throat> get some heavy equipment on the beach. It's a very large whale, about 50 feet, pretty heavy, uh, 60,000 pounds maybe, plus or minus a few thousand. And they're going to pull the whale up onto the beach as far as we can, as far as we're able to. And then they'll start to take some photos, some measurements, learn as much as about this whale as they can, and then do a necropsy, which is like an autopsy, and uh, to try to understand what might have uh, caused this, this whale to die, um, learn as much as we can about it. It looks very thin, and so they'll just begin to investigate that. How unusual is it to have a sperm whale this close to shore on the Gulf of Mexico? It's really unusual to have a Gulf of Mexico this close to shore. The last one I remember being at was in 2008. Uh, we get about two sperm whales strand a year in the southeast U.S., but along the Gulf Coast, not as frequently, and so it's a real rare event. They do live in the Gulf of Mexico in deep water really far offshore, so we typically don't see them, and so this is, this is a really rare opportunity. I know people hearing about this yesterday, people hearing about it now, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is, can you rescue the whale? And I, I understand that scientists that arrived yesterday were pretty quick to determine that this whale was beyond rescue. For, for a whale that lives so far offshore in the, in the deep Gulf of Mexico, to be this close to shore uh, means that it's not doing very well. So we all knew just by looking at it that it was thin, its behavior, that it couldn't really swim very well. Um, that it wasn't, it was not, it was not a healthy whale. And so it, it's really sad when these things happen, of course, but, you know, this is an opportunity to learn as much as we can, meanwhile. And in the past, I know you're going to work to determine exactly what was wrong with this whale, but in the past, what are some types of things that you've seen that, and you've learned from necropsies to determine why the whale may have stranded? Yeah, it's always difficult to know exactly why a whale strands. In some cases, it's really obvious. In other sperm whale cases, when we've done a similar necropsy, we found a lot of trash and plastic in the stomach that clearly caused the animal to die. Um, in other cases, you might not get any really direct cause. Um, sometimes it could be, um, you know, an illness of some sort. Uh, sometimes it can be, uh, you know, you know, blunt force trauma from a vessel that you might not see anything ex externally, but when you look internally, you see. So you just don't know until you start um, start going in there to sort of see what you can learn and find out. And sometimes it takes us a while too, because just like with humans, we send things off to labs and wait for results to come back. And so sometimes we know, and sometimes we don't. But each time we learn a lot. And just explain to me a little more about this creature. We understand that they are endangered? Yes, yeah, sperm whales are an endangered species. Um, we estimate there's about a thousand plus or minus a couple hundred that live year round in the Gulf of Mexico. A lot of people don't know there are whales out there, right. but there are. This and the rice as well. So they are endangered. Um, they're deep divers. They typically feed um, thousands of feet beneath the surface on squid and giant squid and smaller squid. They're deep sea creatures, and we, we know a little bit about them, but at the same time, they're so far offshore, we don't rarely get to see them. And you said this is a fairly rare event to have a whale stranding. I, I would have to imagine that it, it's difficult for even though, you know, you're scientists, this is nature, but it has to be difficult to watch this process play out. Every time you see a whale in distress, uh, like we did yesterday, it's, it's always really hard. It's really hard. Um, and so all we can do is um, use, utilize the opportunity to learn as much about them as we can, and then that helps us understand some of the things that we can do to ultimately recover and help them. And so in that way, um, that's how we have to think about it.
Laura, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks. Back to you guys. All right, Kelly Cowan there with our Fox 13 Tampa team. A very sad update there. Thank you so much, Kelly, for taking the time to be here with us. Of course.